So now again we will perform the ZJ minus CJ operation on our simplex table number 2. So let's do it. So for column A1, it will be this number into this number that is 4 by 7 into 21 plus 12 plus this number into this number that is minus 3 by 7 into 0 is 0. So 12 plus 0 minus this number above. So 12 minus 5 is 7. Next for column A2, it will be this number into this number that is 1 into 21, 21 plus this number into this number that is 0 into 0, 0. So 21 minus this number above. So 21 minus 21 is 0 written here in the ZJ minus C0. Next for column A3, it will be this number into this number that is 1 by 7 into 21 is plus 3 plus this number into this number so that is minus 6 by 7 into 0 is 0 so 3 plus 0 is 3 minus this number above so 3 minus 0 is 3 written here in the zj minus c0 similarly for column a4 it will be this number into this number plus this number into this number minus this number above so that will be 0 written here in the zj minus c0 and now we will observe all the values in zj minus c0 whether they are positive or not if they are positive our present solution is optimal and if they are not our present solution is not optimal and we have to move forward to another simplex table so luckily all the values in zj minus c0 are positive so our present solution is optimal so now we will find out the values for our primal problem which is given in the question and the dual problem which we obtained by converting so remember both the values for dual problem and the primal problem is obtained from the final simplex table so this is our final simplex table this is the final because all the values in zj minus c0 are positive so the optimal solution of the primal problem is given from the last two columns of the final simplex table. In the last two columns the values are 3 and 0. They belong to x and y with respect to our primal problem. So we can say x is 3 and y is 0. And the putting the values of x and y in the minimized gen. So mean z becomes 14x that is 14 into 3 plus 18y that is 18 into 0 that's equals to 14 into 3 is 42 this is the answer of our primal problem and the optimum solution of the dual problem is given from the b column of the final simplex table so in the b column the values are 2 and 6 they belong to the variable q and s in the final simplex table, there are only two variables q and s. So q equals to 2 and s equals to 6. But in our dual problem, the variables are p and q. So p is not present in the simplex table. So value of p is equals to 0. q is present, the value of q is 2. R is not present, the value of R equals to 0 and S is present, the value of S equals to 6. So that is written here, P equals to 0 and Q equals to 2. So by putting the values of P and Q in the objective function max W, which is equals to 5P plus 21Q, that is 5 into 0 plus 21 into 2, that is equals to 21 into 2, 42 which is the answer of our dual problem. As you can observe, both the values are same. That is why we practice the duality. So why do we practice the duality? Number one, we practice duality because if the number of constraints or number of rows in our original primal problem are more and number of columns or number of variables are less in our original primal problem, 
we can convert into equivalent dual problem. So if we have number of rows equals to 3 in our problem problem, we will get the number of columns equals to 3 in our dual problem. So by reducing the number of rows, we can reduce the computational burden. And reason number 2, we can verify our answer. So by solving a primal problem, if you get the final answer, you can check the value or check the answer by solving the equivalent dual problem. If both the values are same, then our answer is correct. Reason number 3, duality is practice for another reason that is sensitivity analysis or the post optimality analysis. So by using duality, we can check the sensitivity of our variables. That is another concept. I may make another video on that. So that's it for now. How was the video? Let me know in the comments below. I will upload more videos for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you can stay connected with me and get regular updates from me. Whenever I upload my next video, you will get an email if you subscribe. And it takes a lot of effort and research to make a video like this. So if you appreciate my effort, please like and share the video. That will definitely encourage me. So thanks for watching. See you in my next video. And till then, stay connected by subscribing.